Hello guys, my name is Larry and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be filming part two of a, I kind of call it a mini series on how we built this 158 inch uh, homemade sawmill. Uh, there's many different ways to build these things. Uh, I'm kind of fond about doing them the way I'm doing this one here. Uh, and I, like I said, it's going to be three, four, maybe even five parts, I'm not sure yet. Uh, depends how we progress with each one of the series. So let's dive right into it and I'll show you what, we're, where we've, what we've achieved on part two of this video. All right, if you're standing on the back of the sawmill, this is the right side, of course. I think everybody can uh, pretty much figure that out. And one of the topics I'm going to go over today is uh, my lifting mechanism. Uh, it is kind of unusual. What we've done is we've taken a wheelchair motor, and uh, I kind of like it. It works very well. The only problem that we are having with it, let me get this camera refocused here. There we go. The main problem that we're having with it is that it actually spins too fast and the head lifts up and down too quickly. Now I want to slow that down. Uh, I'm not sure yet exactly how I'm going to do that. Maybe a, a change in the pulley up on top. But this thing speed is running extremely fast and I'll hook up a battery to it or a charger here in a few minutes to show you how it's traveling and how fast it's traveling. Now the other thing is we've got a handle here. Let me back off on the camera a little bit. So you can see a little bit more of the area. This is my manual lifting system. Now this I don't have in place yet, but I'm going to release it and I'll show you the top in just a minute. It picks it up and down. And I probably need to get you a bigger shot, better shot of the whole head while I'm doing that. Let me try to back it up. Maybe you can see that a little bit better. For every complete turn, this thing moves three quarter inch over here. Now I've also taken right here in this area, I've got an Allen wrench, a little set screw here. And the set screw, let me get the right one. This is the right size set screw that's going into it, however, it's too long. But if I don't want to have this thing knocking the hell out of me whenever uh, I'm trying to raise and lower when it's on the power side. I'll just pull that handle off and now it'll, you'll be able to run it only on power but if you need to manually up, go up and down you'll have to slide this back in place and lock your set screw back down just like so and then you're able to go up or down just like you want to. Now, I imagine we're going to have a little bit of background noise but hopefully it's not as much. I'm wearing a mic today which does help send somewhat. Uh, now this is going to be my locking lever and it's going to have a spring which is right here let me lock the head in place just like so and put that in there and as I'm cranking this is very very difficult to shoot especially this time of the day because I just don't have the proper amount of light where I need it but I'm going to try to do the best I can to get you a good shot there There, let me turn around. Get the camera up a little bit more. You can see that this just pops and locks and back in place, and that keeps the sawmill from uh, going backwards. If you don't want the noise, you just hold it down, release that clamp over there, and then it locks it in place. Maybe I can get you a better shot by holding the camera myself. Oh, that'll light. But let's do it. And back it up and locks it in place. Now I'm gonna put a lighter spring on there. That spring is a little bit too heavy and it makes a loud popping noise so I'm gonna bring that spring down to about half that size. Now we are dealing with an inch and a quarter shaft and as each video progresses or maybe in this one I'll give you a few of the measurements. If you watch any of my other videos you know I use that plate and as this separates, you're able to adjust the blade accordingly. Got these wheels from tx-covers.com under the industrial section. That's a 158 inch blade. Something I must mention, if you're gonna run the cable setup, which I love it. I've tried Acme screw rod, I've tried boat winches, I've tried everything. 
Uh, this seems to be the best setup by far. The only thing is you want to make sure that this cable, you see how I got this set up right up here? You're going to try to get this as straight as you possibly can as it winds up. And it must be the same on both sides. And I did this one on purpose so you can intentionally see it. You see how it is riding from the top to the bottom to the right hand side. That will tell you that one side of this carriage or the head on the carriage will be lifting higher than the other side. So it's very important that you have those cables set, wound, rotating the same location on each side of the sawmill carriage. Now we refer to carriage as the part that rides on the tracks. As you see down on the bottom, I've got my, my boxes and my three inch wheels. I believe it, yeah, three inch wheels tacked in place. And we're back to the blade guide rollers. These came from tx-covers.com. And just to mock set, do a mock setup on these, you see I've got this piece here that I found in a scrap pile. I welded me a little ear here. I've got my adjusters, <coughs> excuse me. I tapped and threaded these holes here to where if I need to move this either way, I can do that with these screws. And if I need to move this in or out, I, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna machine something here. But this is this is perfect where it's at. It just needs to be a little tighter. And this is not, not completely tight yet. But I'm gonna finish this up, but that's where we're going with that. Now I'm gonna get over here on my old trusty Victor lathe, and I'm gonna machine me something to put over there with the blade guide rollers. She's old antique, but she does a good job. Something else that I'm going to be replacing is these aluminum. I've got some stainless steel order that are way more heavy duty than that. As I can tell you right now, these aluminum ones are not going to last very long. They just don't have the strength to hold anything. This side is fixed on this, this end. Something you may want to make sure that you do if you decide to build one setup like this is always kick this plate back that way a sixteenth of an inch or even an eighth inch if you have to and bring this out this way. Why I'm telling you that is because it's so important that whenever, oh boy, let it auto adjust. Whenever you put a blade on a sawmill, pulley, there's going to be a chance that it's going to want to pull in as you're tightening it up. And there's going to be some give on that shaft. I don't care uh, what type of shaft it is. There's going to be some give on that shaft. And you can compensate by putting that plate in the original position the first time, making sure that you angle it out a little bit so you'll compensate on when that blade is tightened that it'll, it'll walk straight and run straight. Okay, the tape is, that's where the motor's going to be sitting. Just to give you a rough idea on the measurements, from here, oh boy, I, I hate this autofocus, all the way over to here, that is going to be 38 and a quarter. Now if you go from here, all the way back to this side here, that is going to be 38 and a half. That's two inch. This is your next size down, slides in and out of there perfectly. It's got a little slack in there just like you need so that it doesn't bind up. I think I showed you the motor, but I'll show you again. It's a little 420 cubic inch Predator engine that I picked up from a Harbor Freight. It does have electric start. And it's not the clutch that I'm going to be running. I run a, actually a heavy duty clutch, but that one will be put on there for purposes, uh, testing purposes. And you're probably asking, why do I have all these nuts loose and not tightened down? Well, 
I just wanted to get the plate adjusted to where it needs to be so that I can see if the blade is running true. And I'll go back and I'll finish all this up as I progress with the build. Uh, I'm not going to cut them off because if you ever wanted to go to the next size blade up, all you had to do was bring this plate out further this way and you'd be able to run a bigger blade. Now that does not mean that you're going to be able to cut a bigger log. Well, let me rephrase that. It does mean you'll be able to cut a little bigger log because when you do that, you're going to be moving this wheel out that way. When you do that, you're opening the throat where the blade, the log goes into the blade. So you might gain an inch to two inches or three inches, depending on how far out that all thread sets out there. So it does have its benefits. Now you're not going to move this side out, but you will be able to move the other side out. Now we got a 40 tooth sprocket up there and down on the bottom down here, got a nine tooth sprocket. That autofocus, it sucks. But yeah, that there is a nine tooth sprocket. I think what I'm doing is that when I go over here and point, see how it changes the focus on the camera sometimes. So I'm gonna try not to be pointing and interfering with the camera. Maybe that'll give you a little clearer shot. But I am open to suggestions of you guys that have built these before. To uh, what would you recommend on this uh, wheelchair motor? I mean, um, the only thing I can see is going to a bigger sprocket up here, which wouldn't really hurt anything. But or maybe a variable speed motor controller or something like that. Hey, post comments down below in the comment section. I'm open for any suggestions. I'm used to always going with the manual lifting system. I can get it done fast, get it done accurate, and it works perfect every time. But again, open for suggestions, comments down in the comment section. Speaking about the blade guide rollers, now this one on this side is really, really easy. It does have the adjustments where you can run up and down with it. And I did show you the screws here. I don't want to point them out because I lose focus. But this one on this side is going to be a little more challenging. I'm going to have to attach it to that 2x2 two two square tubing and drop it down to the bottom of the head there and put a slider across it. And then put my blade guide roller in an area there that will help me uh, do what it needs to do. So that one's going to be a little more challenging. That'll be in the next video. Uh, along with several other things that I'm going to try to hook up on it. Yeah, I know the video is not high quality. Then again, I'm 60 something plus years old and it's pretty hard to keep up with this uh, nowadays generation of these YouTube videos. Age and having COVID really put a damper on things. This here, like I said, is a 158 inch blade. And this will be the first time that I've tried the pulley in the back there, which will be coming off the back of the motor up on top up here, where the actual tape measure's at. Before, I ran off the back here with the pulley and then had the motor sitting further back to the right which added a lot of weight to the very, very back of the sawmill, which I wasn't very happy with. I'm gonna to try to keep it more centrally set on this build. Now, once I get this one built, I think I'm gonna go ahead and build one completely different than this one to compare it to some of that I've seen there on YouTube to see which one of these will actually work better and do a better job. Well, I think I've covered every topic that I could cover today on this build. And I apologize again for the background noise if there's any. And the sloppiness of the video or the camera taking the shot with the uh, focusing in and out. You know, you'd think you'd spend uh, $1,200, $1,300 for a camera that it would do almost everything but wipe your butt, right? But that ain't so true. 
Well, guys, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like, subscribe, thumbs up. If you're interested in seeing our future videos, when you do hit the thumbs up and like, we normally send out a notification. And you'll be one of the first to see this thing in operation once we get through video and the complete build and, and the tracks that it's going to run on. Again, thanks for watching. Have a great evening. God bless you.